The third part is how do you get information from point A to point B? Today, let's talk about virtual private networks. What we often think of as VPNs. Now, one of the things I like to do when we talk about something like VPN is let's spread the words out. Let's figure out what these words really mean. First of all, let's start with the word virtual. Now, anybody that's been through one of our classes knows that anything after the word virtual is a lie. So, therefore, this must mean to appear to be like. In other words, to emulate. Well, what are we emulating? Well, we're emulating a private network. If this was truly a private network, we wouldn't need this word virtual. So therefore, what we're trying to do is to try to create an environment that looks like a private network. Well, let's go over here and talk about this word network. Now, a lot of people, no disrespect meant, but a lot of people make a big deal out of this word network. You know, I have a very simple view of the world here. If we're over here at A and we want to get to B, get me there. That's what a network's for. So what this tells me is at the end of the day, this concept of VPN is really all about this word privacy. Now, again, I sort of have a very simple philosophy about this. I think that if we're going to talk about privacy, we should talk about two key questions that have to be answered. One is, how are we going to create the privacy? This is a technological discussion that we want to have relative to the various ways of creating privacy. Uh, we'll come back to this in a second. Over here, we want to answer the where question. Where should we create the privacy? And there's two choices here. Do we want to create the privacy with something that might be done on a particular premise? maybe in a box or a piece of equipment. Some people will refer to this as maybe a CPE or customer premise equipment solution. The alternative then is that we might have some kind of network-based approach to creating the privacy. Something that I wouldn't do myself but might be out there in an actual cloud similar to what we've drawn up here in a network. Let's go back to this technological discussion for a second. If I were to ask you, how would you create a set of privacy? What kinds of things might you do? Well, you might say that you want to use different kinds of techniques. Perhaps I might say that I would want to use something like encryption. And encryption is certainly a tool that I can use to create various kinds of privacy. Well, now the question becomes, what kind of encryption might I want to use? Do I want to use DES or triple DES or AES for Advanced Encryption Standard. Lots of different choices here under this tool called encryption. Another tool, one that I actually want to spend a little bit more time focusing on, is something called tunneling. Now, in a tunneling world, this is where I might put what we call a wolf in sheep's clothing. And this is where we have to understand certain aspects of the OSI reference model so that we can actually create an environment where we can actually do that wolf in sheep's clothing approach. So let's assume for a second that we might do this tunneling approach down here at what we would think of as layer two or the data link layer. Well, this is where we would see technologies like frame relay or ATM as being techniques that we would use in a tunneling approach. Now, there is no encryption that's built into frame relay or ATM. That's extra. So you have to pay for that extra encryption aspect. And we could do the same kind of thing up here at what we might think of as layer three, or the network layer, in which case we would use a different technology, something we refer to as IPsec. Now, those of you that are used to dealing VPNs from perhaps your own computer know that you would use tools or techniques like a Cisco VPN client or a Nortel Contivity client to connect to a Cisco VPN concentrator or a Nortel Contivity box. And embedded within that IPsec capability is my authentication and encryption. It's like ragu sauce. It's built in there. Now, there's a third possibility as well, and let's refer to this as our upper layers approach. 
Now, many of you out there know that you could connect to a website using something called HTTP. But if I'm going to do something like online banking, I don't want to go to a public website and use something that's just like HTTP. I would like to have maybe a secure version of HTTP. So we use something called HTTPS. And you notice that up at the top of your web browser. And what it does is it creates a secured sockets layer connection to the web page that we ultimately want to connect to. So what we see here is three different kinds of ways of doing a VPN based on various layers of the OSI reference model. Now all three of these could be argued that are done with on-premises or equipment-based solutions because I need different kinds of equipment to create those VPNs. What's also interesting, though, is to think in terms of the fact that a good account team would actually not just sell one of these different VPN solutions, but actually could create an environment to sell multiple VPNs. Let me show you what I mean. If I was to look down here at the frame relay or the ATM solution, we would see this being used, let's say, between a branch office and the headquarters location. Our typical infrastructure, if you will, along the lines of our cloud between our branch office and our headquarters location. In IPSec, we were talking about this as being an example of the VPN that you might use if you're a remote worker or a virtual worker. Well, this suggests that what we're going to do here is use something that we might think of as an intranet experience for people like you that are working at home but need access to corporate environments, but yet you're not inside the firewall. Now we're going to use an, an intranet kind of environment, different than we're in our office location. Now something like this, the HTTPS or SSL environment, remember we were talking about things like online banking. Well, this is where you also get into what we call extranets instead of intranets. But not only do I use this for examples of where customers or clients and supply chain partners get access to that data that we so, are so concerned about protecting the information and security about, but it can also be used in an intranet environment as well. So for example, if I was in an environment where I might be behind a firewall and I couldn't launch a VPN, I might use my web browser to connect to our corporate environment without the hassle of launching something like IPsec. So here you have three different kinds of tunneling experiences, but that's different than this network-based one that we have over here. That network-based VPN actually uses a different technology, which we refer to as MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. And what happens in that environment is that you as the customers connect to that cloud, very much like what we think about in the phone environment. You buy a connection to the cloud, and the network connects the dots between those two things. Now, MPLS is much bigger than that. That's a very simplistic view of the world. But it does give you an idea that what we have now are four different kinds of VPNs.